So hi, dear colleagues. Um, so, you know, one of our topics always in this kind of area is we have to be agile. So I would like to say that uh, just about one hour ago, um, our colleague uh, Claudine Lim wrote to me that she's terribly ill today and unfortunately um, can't take part in this presentation, which is a shame because we actually thought that most of us these days are a little bit bored of presentations and wouldn't it be nice to have a, a conversation. So we'd set up a, a nice kind of conversational format, which I'm afraid I'm going to have to break a little bit now. Um, so basically what I'm going to do first um, is Claudine has sent me a video, which is a six minute video, which basically just introduces you to uh, the principles for div digital development and our say a few words about them in just a second. And then after that, I'll just make the link to the project I'm managing, which is called Atingi. I'll tell you a little bit about that. And then I'm going to pick up the three topics which Claudine and I wanted to talk about, which is um, how to focus on the user, how to think about scale, and how to think about collaboration. And I think those three things are probably relevant to, to any of the big projects we're working on at the moment. And so I'm hoping then just saying a few things about those will be an invitation to you to make some uh, some comments, uh, either in the chat or, of course, you're very welcome then to, to come in and we have a, a small discussion. So with that, that's essentially the format. So let me just explain um, a little bit about the, the, the context itself. And maybe the best way of doing that is if I introduce myself and then I say how I got myself to the digital uh, principles for development. So uh, my background is, well, firstly, I've been to Open Belgium for, I don't know, the last couple of years for sure, maybe the last three years or so. And the connection for me has mostly been um, with the colleagues who are working on open recognition. Um, this is a kind of a reflection of the things that interest me very much, which is picking up on things to do with digital innovation, innovation in general, um, but thinking about how can we pick these things up and start actually using them to influence the mainstream. This has been really kind of the, the main thrux of my interest. Um, in the last years, I think the first time I came uh, to Open Belgium, I was still working at a, a private research institute where we were looking at how to open up uh, the labor market and how to offer further education. And that's why I came in uh, with the colleagues working on the MIRVA project, which is about open recognition. Um, last year where I came, and I very much remember it was just before the whole COVID thing began and we were all a bit concerned, can we really shake people's hands? And I really remember this moment where it was all a bit awkward. Um, Again, there I was talking about micro-credentials and uh, open recognition, but the context for me had changed a little bit because I was already working for a digital learning platform called Kiron. Uh, Kiron is a, a learning platform uh, centered in uh, Berlin, and it's helping refugees get to higher education, essentially. Um, during my time in, uh, at Kiron, I also did some advice for a, a project which was just being developed at the time from the German uh, Cooperation and Development Agency, GIZ, which is associated with the, the German Ministry for International uh, Development. Um, the project uh, which, is, uh, which I'm now part of is called Atingi. It's about setting up a learning platform um, and we've got huge uh, scaling ambitions. We're expecting in 2025 to be reaching 100 million people, but more about that later. The point for me was I was very interested in getting to this because it seemed to me a way to actually um, really get to the mainstream, really start changing things, and also link the two things I've been working at, working on before, which was how do we think of learning in many, many different contexts and maybe in a more kind of open format? How did I get to the principles for digital development? The interesting thing is when you're at, particularly if you're building up something very new, then of course you need some kind of framework to orientate yourself. You need to have a kind of an idea about what should I really be focused on? And um, the nine principles which have been developed um, 
in the uh, the principles uh, for digital development I find very good and they also kind of I think you'll find as well they're, they're very familiar to most of us because at least one or two or maybe all of them are actually quite commonplace at the moment but still it's important to I think focus on them and um, the nice thing for us and more about that as well later I think but I find it it's, it's quite an easy way to kind of speed up some processes because you can find something you agree on with many other partners you can say okay we all agree on that now let's move on ahead this is a bit of the background but i would like to now uh, pass over and i hope this works now to the video uh, with claudine speaking it's a like i say it's a six minute video so i'm sorry that it's like a, a pre-recorded format but i'm sure you understand of course uh, better this way than not having her at all um, so it gives a small introduction to all of the nine principles and a little bit of, uh, of their history. They were actually developed in 2014, 2015, so they've been around a lot. And I've also found, in my experience, that they're not known very well. Um, so I think it's, it's nice to give them an exposure. So I would move on to the video and then we'll come back and have a few discussions. So let me just see if I can set that up. And thank you for being there, Astrid. If this is not working, then you have to give me some instructions. But I think I actually just press the play button. That's what it looks like to me. And let's see. Just checking. Uh, is it possible to hear that? Yes, I, I, I hear Claudine speaking. Okay, good, then I shall continue.
Okay, so that worked rather well, inclu including her passing back to us. Um, she is now actually uh, the director of the principals, uh, so no longer, I think it said their senior associate. Uh, I think is I think there's a couple of points there where she also mentions, for example, open standards is the most complicated thing. Not for this group, I would imagine. I think that's probably the easiest bit. Uh, it's also not the bit that I would essentially focus on uh, for our discussion here. Um, but if I may, I just give you just one slide and uh, just one tiny bit of information as a background to a tinky. Let's just see if I can actually uh, manage to pull up that slide. Um, and let me just see if it's now. Uh, no, it hasn't come across yet. Uh, it started to upload and then it, it ended. Ah, that's abruptly. probably because I was being too... Uh, did it stop again now or I was just too impatient? Uh, it hasn't uploaded again. Okay, let me just see here for one second. Uh, I guess I tried this just before. Oh, it tells me it's actually been shared now. Not yet. Okay, good. Then I'll tell you what, then, uh, then I think I would... Uh, yes, ah, now it's now it's now. coming. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm just not patient enough. Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show you uh, one uh, one slide. So you've seen already uh, the principles, which we, I think, could come back to into discussion. And I just wanted to show you then uh, one quick picture of a number of things with, uh, with the Atingi platform itself. So I've already mentioned a little bit about um, our ambition of where we want to go. So and and you can see already from the picture so uh before we started that or when we first started we were actually called africa cloud um this is actually a project which was pretty much uh, dreamt up by um, the federal minister for international development and the idea really is just um, there are many uh, learning opportunities which are really going unmet uh, or learning needs also going unmet, and then um, a learning platform could actually help us an enabler here. Um, just as very much as uh, Claudine said, um, the whole process is started by doing some appraisal missions, particularly in West Africa, uh, where I was involved as well, and working with a local partner called uh, Smart Africa. Excuse me. <laughs> um, that's the advantage of doing a home office, kind of. Um, then we try to understand kind of what the, uh, what the actual needs were and we established in uh, 2019, set ourselves up. We are now at a stage where we've got over a million uh, contacts with uh, learners. We have 200,000 200, learners registered on our platform. Um, and now we've actually, which has been a huge help to us, we've mo uh, migrated to the Moodle learning platform. The reason this is a huge help to us is because it's open source. So there's many, many ways we can link out to other systems. And this really is all part of our growth strategy. And you can see here that uh, we really would like to get to 100 million contacts um, by 2025. You can see our goal there. But I'd just like to mention that briefly, a world in which digital learning is inclusive, accessible, relevant, safe, and secure for all. Of course, we could have said here learning, but I think especially all of us in reviewing what's been happening in the last year in many, many countries, including, I would say, Germany. Um, digital learning is often, uh, because of the technical side, it often has many other kind of restrictions uh, which should be thought about. So I think it's very important here that we've uh, emphasized digital learning. So this is a bit about um, the background of Atingi. And really then, I would just like to turn over to um, three points which I think are probably the most interesting, at least for me, and also in discussion with Claudine, these are the most interesting points of the principles. I think all nine are very interesting. Um, and I would just like to maybe uh, mention 
my perspective on these three in connection with the Tingi. And then I'm super happy to uh, open up a little bit to discussion and just see what, what your thoughts are. And of course, you can also pose questions to the digital principles. Maybe I can answer or otherwise I just pass them over to uh, Claudine and colleagues for later. The first point, um, keeping a focus on the learner. The reason I want to mention this is on the first, uh, in the first instance, it seems very obvious, but especially in te technical projects, I think this often doesn't happen. Uh, the reason it doesn't happen is because we often get involved in kind of the technicalities of how things work. And in fact, um, uh, just over this weekend in Twitter, there were some um, complaints about various of the, um, uh, some of the developments of the um, vaccine app that is being discussed, for example, in Germany, where tech seems to be uh, totally dominating any of the discussions about how sensible something is. Uh, the tagline was uh, that the uh, vaccine uh, information was going to be uh, saved on five different blockchains. And I think there you can see this, this point that if we start focusing on the tech very much, then we kind of lose uh, the user. Now, the interesting point for us is that we as a Tingi, as I've just mentioned, we understand ourselves a little bit differently maybe than many learning platforms because we are understand ourselves very much as a kind of a, a backbone for learning. And uh, you may be aware that uh, GIZ employs, I think, over 24,000 people across the world. And of course, across the world, many of those are actually already doing learning, uh, offering learning, or offering trainings and things like that. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to persuade these people to actually get onto our learning platform. Um, so therefore, they can actually uh, scale out to actually the people they're actually offering the learning. So the interesting thing for us, and I think it's a challenge for us, is how can you keep the uh, the user in focus, particularly the end user, so the learner, whilst you're trying to scale like we are. And um, the way we're trying to do that is we're trying to introduce uh, much stronger feedback loops. So it's not the case of um, uh, limiting at the f starting point. So we do have some focus groups, but we say essentially we're open for any of these pro uh, projects and we're also open uh, for many, many different types of learners. But what we try and do is we're trying over time to actually learn about these learners. So that's how we're trying to do that. But of course, then uh, we also get this whole case of how do you scale in this kind of setting? How do you scale in a, uh, the setting of um, international development? Because international development is very often focused on context. It's focused on trying to be as relevant to local communities as possible, how can you scale at the same time? Because surely scale means actually abstracting from the specific and trying to become more general. Again, this is a, a challenge we're trying to deal with. Um, the first point is, of course, if you actually manage to um, be relevant for many different contexts, that's the only way you're going to scale. Because taking going back to this first point, only if what you're doing is valuable to the individual learner, will it actually uh, grow and actually become stronger. So the ways we're doing this is we're trying to find ways to work very much uh, with uh, co-design of uh, curricula, co-design of learning, learning um, units, but also trying to have more kind of ex inclusive learning experiences including also the combination of having uh, digital learning, because very often digital learning, I've called it recently, learning in a box. It's a little bit of this thing that's kind of a closed thing that's kind of ready and perfect. It's not very good at talking about context, but if you can combine something like that, maybe as background information, with webinars, with uh, the ways of exchanging, and in the end, if you have the goal that actually every new learner is also going to become, become a peer to all the other learners and, and, and therefore a supporter, then I think you can get the scale. And the final point um, is being collaborative. Um, two points here, really. Firstly, of course, we know very clearly that we're not the only people who've thought of these ideas or are working on. So we're actively looking for other people to collaborate with. And the question is, how do you actually collaborate? Of course, you can cooperate. In other words, you say, okay, 
do you have learning materials that I could use as well? And um, most of the learning materials you would find on Atingi are open educational resources and have been developed by other partners. But that's not really in-depth collaboration. We are working collaboratively at the moment uh, with the World Bank on some of their work they're doing uh, in Africa. And the way you can be collaborative, and that's why I think the principle is so good, is if you've got like a common reference framework. And these principles, therefore, they really help us because they're, the, they're our kind of starting point. And um, I've already mentioned the other element of our project, Atingi, which is that it's a highly political project as well, because it was something which was an initiative of a minister. So again, we also have, from the other side, we do have some pressure and also some ideas coming from the ministry about what we should be doing. Again there, these principles are a nice orientation for us because it's very easy for us to say, um, yes, we're doing that because it is involved in this principle. So. For me, one of the big successes we had last year uh, was that we managed to persuade the ministry that it's very important for us to have like, a learning management system, which is open source. And uh, there were certain people in the ministry who, as Claudine just mentioned, weren't quite so familiar with why open source makes sense, but they were familiar with the principles. And that kind of gave us a, a, a fast track to some of those discussions. Okay, so there's, a, there's some of my, my points. I would be um, very happy also if uh, anyone would like to uh, make any comments. About, um, these principles, about the challenges of them, uh, and particularly around these topic areas, and maybe just to say what you're involved in at the moment and, and why you've come to the session today. most people are joining in listen only mode ah. um, so they can't speak or turn on their camera so i suggested if you want to participate in the discussion that you do connect with the audio um, so we can actually talk Yes, maybe we can also ask um, uh, BGA Big Big Talata. I think we can. Can we not? I think we can give them the right to speak. Can we? Uh, they can speak if they want to. They can, um, yeah. But you do have to connect to the audio, which you do by clicking on the telephone icon. Okay, but he is saying uh, he or she, thank you, is saying uh, they type fast. So let's start with that then. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, so you're working um, uh, in in the with the development background in the public sector, and you're an open source fan, and you're looking for ways to enhance the collaboration with the end user. Okay, but this is this is so. Does that mean you're actually asking me or anyone else here to, to think about how to, to enhance the collaboration? That's a, that's a difficult one. Um, so I think um, it's, it's a challenge. I, the, I think the main point is collaboration. Maybe, maybe we should just spend one moment thinking. Collaboration means that when people work, then it's kind of more of the sum of the individual parts. So collaboration means then you have to try and find something where it's not just kind of user input, user feedback or something like that, but they're actually designing with you or they're actually, um, you know, making some kind of proactive input. And I think that is a challenge because you have to try and find out where does that work. Um, I think it's always good to try experiments first um, and, and just see how that works. But uh, everyone essentially. Okay, Hi. I think Lucas, yes. Yeah, you, uh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Dominic, for, for this opportunity. I would love to pick it up. Um, I pasted the link of what we are doing. It's uh, the biggest citizen uh, driven community related with creating air quality data. And we are receiving uh, air quality data from over 14,000 stations in over 70 countries and have generated the biggest air quality data and its uh, data set. 
which is like over 11 billion data points. So what you do sounds very interesting for us because we have a campaign that is like sensor to school. So basically we want to highlight every school that uh, wants to be part of this measurement. And we want to bring this open data and this open source activity to the schools and libraries in this world. So uh, if you would perhaps like um, give us some tips with who we can talk, how we could uh, tap into your network with what you are doing to connect, because I think uh, we could give a good fit. Uh, we have this visualization tool and perhaps like you could show us like how we could tap into your uh, extraordinary growth. I mean, your numbers are really like <laughs> impressive, uh, but perhaps you could show us like how we could like join your efforts and bring this data to the people. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Lucas. Yes, uh, so uh, um, we are actually building up a, a portfolio on the whole like, aspect of uh, digital transformation. And I, uh, you know, it's a very, very big field. I think this is definitely one thinking about open data. We're actually working on two levels because um, we kind of got a focus on uh, informing policymakers and regulators so that they're actually become sensitized and aware of many of these developments. On the other hand, we're also um, actively going directly to, to our learners. We um, don't have anything yet on open data. Um, we have some things already on um, how to develop, for example, um, a, uh, a, learner, a learning database for artificial intelligence. We have a few things there, but um, we do have some work here uh, within G GIZ also on um, open data. So I, I can see some nice connections here. So you're very welcome to contact me afterwards as well. And this, I think, brings comes to one major point, which is of most interest to, to me and I think to Atingi is there are many things happen, many new things happening at the moment, and they don't tend to be picked up by traditional education. And also, even if they are, um, that's only you know the youth population and only to a certain age. So I'm, I, we're very interested in this whole kind of field of non-formal learning, where um, people then become become aware of some of these things. And we know for sure, for example, in Africa. Policy makers and people working in ministries and regulation uh, offices are very interested in some of these things because they've kind of they're, they're, they're hearing about some of them, but they don't realize what's possible. And I think um, we don't need to say this is uh, a situation in Africa. I think in Germany it would be the same situation. So, um, yes, so super happy to um, hear more about that. Um, Thank you, Dominic. Lucas. Great, we'll do so. We'll contact you. Thank Thanks. You. Uh, Dominic, you just mentioned the non-formal learning, and I was wondering, um, where do you see, or do you see the traditional, uh, uh, like schools, universities, picking this up, or not, in the fu in the future, in the longer term? Do you think it will become more important, or do you think it will stay on the sideline? So. Um... I think also I, I explained a little bit of my background. I think the reason I'm particularly interested in the non-formal sector is it's more kind of it's more of a reaction. It's it's more of a point of okay, new things are happening. Let's try and think of how we can create uh, learning opportunities around them. In other words, it's not based on a curriculum. It's based on these new developments and these new developments are around the SDGs. They're around things like open data, AI. Um, but also many other developments um, in the world. And normally the non-formal is, it's kind of freer to pick these up, but I think we would definitely hope that uh, many of these uh, learning units would also be um, then used in the formal sector. The interesting point is for us, um, it's very important to have short learning units. And also, for example, we're doing some things like um, the one course we're doing currently with the World Bank, which is about digital transformation, uh, in particular related to regulations, we actually have said we don't want any, um, in the first iteration of what we're doing, we don't want to be using any videos. We want to use um, open formats as much as possible because we actually think that we need formats which we can be changing as we learn with the, with the learners or with the users. So. 
this is not really kind of the standard way that formal education thinks about these things. Um, and also my other point often with, um, you know, my own little kind of complaint about formal education in a way is that this is only a tiny weeny pit of our whole life. If you think of your whole lifespan, and especially now, you know, in, in Germany, I think I heard today, you know, the expected uh, uh, lifespan is until 83, I think. So if you leave, even if, let's, even if you leave university at 25, look at all those other years where things should be happening. And the, the education system hasn't been very good at picking that up. And that's why I think many of us who are working in with, with these platform ideas, et cetera, we're, we're saying this is how we can actually help inform people and, and just provide this kind of information and, and see what's and show what's available. And I'm, I'm most interested in using all of this to kind of, you know, uh, as, as a way to start people on new le learning pathways and just you know, stimulate them to think differently. So we welcome other uh, comments in the chat, or um, you can also, you're quite welcome to also uh, take the mic. Maybe while you, while, uh, while you consider that, I just mentioned that um, there's a lot of information about the digital principles. Um, on the website that Claudine mentioned, and I think we've uh, either we've linked it here or oh yes, we've linked it up here as well in different languages. Um, this def they they seem quite trivial, I think, but actually to really implement them, they're not at all trivial. Trivial, I think that's why they're, they're, they're they've been still around so long. So um, I think they are a, a very useful uh, orientation. But I would pass on to Gert, who's just uh, maybe I haven't said your name properly, but Gert, would you like to? Yes. Talk? I'm Geert van Pamel. I am a, a, a member of uh, Wikimedia Belgium. Yes. Um, I have a question. I, I saw in the, in the video that uh, there was some, a project about sustainable development goals. Uh, is this specific for your company or is, is this just uh, the UNESCO project you, you were uh, showing? So I think uh, with the sustainable development goals, uh, firstly, they were using um, in the, with the digital principles, it was an idea of how can you connect the challenges posed by the sustainable development goals with the, the, the opportunities maybe that digitalization can provide. And um, of course, one of those is uh, one of my favorite principles, which is reuse first, which I'm sure is for Wikimedia is like one of the, the foundational uh, mm. principles as well. Um, there, there have been some nice developments recently also in sustainable development. There was, there's an academy called the Sustainable Development Goals Academy, I think, SDG Academy. And a number of us complained about two years ago to say this is very cool, but none of your materials are open, open educational resources. Mm. I think it was uh, the end of last year they actually said now they are. So, but uh, what what was your interest in that, Fed? Well, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals is also a project of the Wikimedia uh, um, volunteer community, uh, which is uh, rather active in 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 yeah a number of countries. I know, for example, Sweden is very very active in 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 that uh, um, uh, sense. Uh, in Wiki, in Belgium, yeah, we do not, for the time being, we do not have specific projects, but uh, our work with with uh, yeah heritage and and, and museums uh, and and cultural institutions and with universities is uh, about yes uh, education and 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 training people how to uh, document and to reuse. Uh, knowledge yes indeed so yeah yeah i think that's really good and uh, for me i mean uh, i i i in 2015 i think i wrote a, a background report for unesco also about uh, some of the indicators for the stds and again they've been also super useful i think as a framework 
because it's really interesting. You can talk, uh, as you say, talk to people in the the the, the cultural sector and in the, in the people in, in involved in civic society. But you can also talk to business about uh, the the SDGs and and somehow they provide a great orientation, I think, for for you know where we're trying to go with many of these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe again, I can uh, mention um, an interesting challenge we've had, which is uh, again back to scale. So one of the principles says uh, design for scale, um, and it says if you are going to pilot things, then make sure you're piloting, but with the big picture um, of, of where you really want to get to. And it's it's very interesting because um, again, I think in the international development community, we often have this idea of piloting. In one community and then if it works maybe we uh, establish something in the next community and there's certainly been a great interest from the side of our ministry to say um, if we start making things if certain things work in, in small communities can we not just say probably the things that make that community you know special in a certain way can be found in many other communities across the world as well. So this is a really interesting thing we're going to we're we're trying to do. I think with our uh, platform is, you know, you can find similar communities which are geographically really quite um, just a, a a small rather trivial example of this was um, a number of months ago. I was talking to some uh, colleagues in São Paulo who developed a really nice call, no, nice course for women in tech. And they explained the, the, the course, they explained uh, also that they were using uh, or they were planning to use open badges as a recognition form. And I said, okay, that sounds really amazing. How many people are you offering this course for? And they said, well, it's for 100 people. And I said, you know, why, why is it only for 100 people? And they said, yes, we've been having a problem because we always have to select and that they also recognized actually why select maybe you can actually offer it for even more and then they also said well actually we've also been in contact with mozambique because mozambique uh, speaking also portuguese has said oh can we not actually use it for our own context so it's really interesting that something's being developed um, in sao paulo possibly then will move over to, to to be used in a much greater scale in mozambique and maybe in other countries as well so i think it's I think this idea of being ambitious and uh, you know trying to think of how you can scale up, but still kind of stay true to the context of the problem itself, um, I think is a challenge, but it's an interesting one. And I think uh, really it's done too little. And I think uh, if we really look at uh, many of the things uh that are happening around uh covid at the moment and germany is a great example with 16 states and every state trying to find their own digital solution to the same problem um this kind of idea of like being collaborative is a huge challenge and i do think uh frameworks such as the digital principles such as the sdgs can really really help us but sure we have to all work on it uh as well but i i think also um uh, many people uh, here and many of the, the organizations which are uh, named here, also the uh, uh, Open Knowledge Foundations, I think those are the kind of foundations which are really working on this stuff. Great, well, thank you very much uh, for your attention. I'm sorry that uh, Claudine wasn't here, but I, I, of course, uh, Astrid was a great support. Thank you very much, Astrid. Um, and um, do look into digital principles and also into Atingi. Uh, in both cases, we're looking for collaborative partnerships. And um, yes, so I wish you a great 
rest of conference i really must say i really like the idea by the way that open Belgium has actually spread the sessions over many days instead of just saying let's pretend it was a physical one but now it's digital because i think nobody wants that anymore um so um thank you very much and greetings to all the colleagues at open Belgium. thank you dominic for the interesting uh, very interesting session i will start So, hi, dear.